Hello friends and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. In this section, we will have a practical exercise on the floating point X operations in C language. Now we will learn how we can use the float variables and how we can carry out some operations and store our result and floating operations. Floating point variables. Okay. So let us first take variable. Let us say the variable is float is the data type. The name of the variable is num underscore float. Okay. And we initialize it a value of 0, 0.0. Okay. Now it has been initialized and uh, now let us take some integer variables okay one integer variable is say num1 and we initialize it to a value of 99 another variable we take as num2 and this variable we initialize as a value of 22 now what we will do is we will try to divide 99 by 22 and then store the variable in num float the output will be stored in num float okay now num float is equal to 99 divided by sorry not 99 but num1 divided by num2 now let us try and print out this variable so print f then we will have the constant string the output of division of percentage d that will be substituted by num1 and percentage d this will be replaced by num2 is this will be replaced by our num underscore float so it will be percentage f now num1 in the same sequence num2 and then at last float variable num underscore float now let us save this function and now compile it so no errors and try to run it let us see what our output is so it is taking a while because of the antivirus okay it is saying the output is 4.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0. But did we expect that? No, we did not expect that. Now, let I will tell you where the problem is. The thing is that the C compiler assumes that the division of two integer variables will result in an integer variable. Although you are storing it in a float variable, but it still does not generate a float output. To do that, what you have to do is you have to use a concept known as typecasting. Okay, what is typecasting? Typecasting is changing the data type from one data type to another but you can not straight away change the types you have to have the compatible data types for changing data types now num1 divided by num2 will generate a compatible output that can be stored in numfloat that is why this will be allowed by c compiler now let us try and run our program and to typecast what you do is before the rhs before the right hand side you just within single brackets add the data type to which you want to typecast the RHS okay suppose here we want to typecast the right hand side to float data type we have specified float in single brackets before the right hand side now just compile it and run it now see the output is 4.5 so because of this typecasting now our compiler knows that the result has to be given in a float data type not in a integer data type now i will show you another thing another way in which we don't have to typecast suppose we use float variables instead of integer variables over here also so our num1 our and num2 are now float now what we have to do is we have to write percentage f over here and then save it and then compile it and then run it okay now it is okay 4.5 but now let us try and remove the typecasting now let us save it again and execute the program compile the program first and then execute the program so the output is again 4.5 okay now this time we did not typecast yet it has assumed that the output of the operation performed on 
floating point variables will be float of float data type. But when the variables were integer data type, the compiler was assuming that the output of operation performed on integer variables will be of integer data type. That is why that time we were getting 4.0.0.0 and in this case we are straight away getting 4.5. Okay, so this was one example of floating point operations. Let us have another example of floating point operations only. Now what we will do is we will try and format the output. So now we can see that earlier the output was coming and it was showing too many digits after the decimal. It is showing by default six digits after the decimal. But suppose we want to print only two digits after the decimal. So we have learned that we can do it by specifying width and dot and then the number of digits after decimal. So we don't want to change the width. Width is fine. Let us specify digits after decimal. So dot we want only two digits after decimal. Here also two and for the output also we want only two digits after decimal. So we have specified dot two, saved the code and compiled it and now executed it. Now let us see the output. So here it is as expected. 99 dot only two digits after decimal here also and here we have also again the two digits after decimal instead of six. That is how you can specify number of decimal spaces that are expected after the output. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and you understand whatever has been taught in this video. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you continue to watch Basics of Programming in C Line.